actually going to talk about the uh, United. The, oh! Come on, Monty Bubbles. You can come join us. Come on, sweetheart. That's the first time I think I've ever seen you do that. Uh huh. Now she did it. Come on, baby. Mm hmm. Come on, baby. I know she missed. You were anxious. You, you were anxious, and you ran into the, <laughs> the day. <laughs> the first time ever on your birthday. But she noticed she didn't hit it hard enough to move the camera. She hit it. It so jolted she, a little bit. Yeah, so that's what you saw at the little bit part of the beginning. That was Monty's bubble. Yeah, it's her birthday today, so. It's your birthday. Monty, Monty, is, Monty is officially 10 years old today. Look at our girl. I mean, that's our girl, Monty Sarah. Monty basically is on Obamacare. He's a senior citizen. Oh, God. Obamacare for dogs. I know. I see. I'm the only person that's allowed to scratch your tail. Nobody but me. But today we're going to... This is old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to be talking about... Uh, about how the Democrats and the President of the United States uh, know that they're going to be tossed out of office. Oh, and, and how would that be? Well, because they're on the wrong side of everything. So now mm -hmm. they're trying to put their imprint on the entire world, whether the world wants it done or not. Their, their social viewpoints, their viewpoints on what is proper to eat, on their viewpoint on religion, everything they're doing now. Uh, the president has got, I mean, like the, here's the latest thing. The president of the United States had the ambassador to Japan lecture the Japanese people on, on eating now. What? Yeah, that they are. How in the okay, world? That they lectured them on on eating uh, dolphins and tuna, eating dolphins and porpoises. Mm -hmm. That that said you're barbaric and all this. I, I'm going to try to explain something. Dolphins and tuna are carnivorous. If you are in the ocean and you are dead, they're going to eat you. Mm -hmm. Sharks are carnivorous. They're going to eat you even if you aren't dead. Lions and tigers. And bears, they will eat you. A gorilla, which is one of our family members on the family tree, will eat you. So what do um, what do humans do with um, with fish and 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 mammals? They eat them. That's how they do it. But you know, sit there and tell people in another country, you're going to have to stop doing that. It's stop a, he, well, he said stop. that to yeah. them. They they uh, said that it is that it is a. Uh, it's a crime against humanity to do what you're doing. Well, there are a lot of greenies that would like I, to I know. Well. I know. She likes her tough scratch. But um, they've also decided to, okay, the Olympic Games are where people are supposed to forget their politics and come together that is in true. sports. Our country's president seemed to want to make it into a political event. Uh, the Olympics are not supposed to be political. In fact, that's one of the things that they try to get them to stop doing is any politics. But every time... Oh, little girl! Look at that horse's ass. I mean, she saw what beep, she beep, did. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, went right underneath. Oh, she likes to she'll, show she off. Turns, she'll turn underneath the tripod. What, which can't be done by a dog her side. Well, she, she's underneath a table that a dog her side cannot get under. There's a tripod like this. Yeah, and she gets under. But um, the, our Democratic president seemed to want to make it a social standpoint. Remember Jimmy Carter re refusing to send the Olympic team and, uh, and Bill Clinton on the Olympics and, and Barack Obama on the Olympics now, that he's sending a whole bunch of gay people to the Olympic game to represent the United States. And here's the thing is... Don't you just send your best athletes? Oh, yeah, no. We're going to get a lot of... Uh, they're upset because some of the gay athletes didn't qualify, but don't worry, they're going to be there anyway. But um, the, the trick is he wants to make a viewpoint that you have to have gay rights in your country. You know why the United Nations doesn't support gay rights? Because only Anglo-speaking countries support gay rights, period. Really? Then no, I mean, it is, okay, it is a crime to be gay in two-thirds of the world. Mm. Two-thirds, okay, Muslims do not approve of it. Roman Catholics do not approve of it. Buddhists do not approve of it. Hindus do not approve of it. Uh, and basically, you go down the line that it's not approved of. And I mean, I know people, for instance, that basically have been gay all their life that are dancers. They can't be gay anymore because what's going on? Mm -hmm. I mean, how would you like to be a baseball, a, little, a, a, a guy that's been a dancer all your life, shows people, you know, is a great athlete, show, loved to play baseball, they can't be a baseball coach anymore because the uh, the people, the Obama supporters, basically make gay rights a big deal in California. Well, 
we don't want you messing around with our kids anymore. Mm -hmm. Like 40 years a baseball coach. 40 years they known he was gay. 40 years of 40 years of work wiped out by the gay rights movement. I know that's a really bad part about it because before they just peacefully existed. They existed. I mean, first of all, here's the trick is they know for a simple fact that everybody Everyone agrees that they should have the right to be married. Everyone. It's a universal thing. Civil services. But what the Obama administration and the Democratic Party have said, no, you can no longer have a religious viewpoint. You must have our viewpoint. Religion basically, you know, F you to religious beliefs. You know what was kind of funny is all this talk about gay rights and they can get married and do all this other stuff. And I've talked to people and they're like, oh yeah, we fought for gay rights and then... Well, we got married and realized there was a marriage tax. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. what? And then we realized that we're subject to all these same things that married people get, like divorce settlements. Yeah. Now they're getting <laughs> alimony. They're getting problems. I mean, okay, they're they're finding but out. Wait a minute. Okay, people that worked in our industry before they gave before the Obama administration started pushing gay rights are not working anymore. Mm -hmm. Look for people, look for movies with gay themes that are actually gay people. Okay. Well, um, if you want to win an award, though, you play gay. a gay person. Yeah, you can play a gay person, but you have to understand that movie is not going to be seen by at least 75% of the world. But you could win an award for it. You can win an award for it, but no one will ever see it out of this country. And they don't want They don't want your gay movies in England. They don't want them in Canada. And if you're thinking that's only if you're a minor star, no, Michael Douglas, Matt Damon, and Behind the Candelabra. Which is actually a great movie. Mm -hmm. It is a great movie. But it wouldn't. they could not give that film away. It's a great movie, but because of the topic. The subject matter. The subject matter. They do not believe in gay rights. Here's the trick is, um, if, uh, for instance, if, you know, um, good people do bad things, bad people do good things, but they, and they only remember the bad thing, that's from, you know, like from uh, Julius Caesar, <laughs> yeah. but, um, but um, there's an awful lot of people that have been gay that have had their life destroyed by the gay rights movement. You don't even have to be gay. You have to, if you look like you're gay, they just, you know, they, they out you. And, it, and this is an industry of which if you're openly gay, you don't work a whole lot. It just isn't done. I mean, we got looking yesterday about people lecturing people about, you know, you're going to have to start including more openly gay people in your movie, even if it, well, not anything for gay, well, write it to fix it so it's got a, a gay representation. Well, if I represent it, okay, um, okay, you know what, uh, here's what it is. You have a, an hourglass full of sand. If you dump the hourglass over, you have a grain of sand in that hourglass. That's how many gay people are really in the world. A grain of sand. So therefore, you do not write movies for a grain of sand. If, it, it, I mean, my father, my grandmother personally knew George M. Cohan. And but they, they get awards. They get awards. George M. Cohan said, you have to remember, this is show business. Mm -hmm. The show must go on in order to pay the bills. If you can't pay the bills, I mean, I actually, a long time ago, I was at my, with Jack L. Warner doing a thing, and, and Jack L. Warner wrote a young person. He said, you know, he said, kid, I don't care what color they are, as long as they've got a nickel to get into the theater. And Nickel, okay, he used, they used to make god awful tons of money doing socially relevant movies that were good. They were exciting. Today, they don't do exciting socially relevant movies. They preach at you. If you want to be preached at you, you can go to church on Sunday, which the Democrats don't actually do. But um, it's just, they're, they're, the Democrats and the President know their stranglehold on the country is coming to an end. So they're trying to take the whole country down with them at the same time. I mean, we're no longer the freest economy in the world because of all the legislation the president has put on everybody. So, uh, what else have we got? Okay, the president basically doesn't think, the president Democrats do not think that you should have religious rights anymore. They're also, his, also his big things is, you cannot do this to the illegal immigrants that are in your, uh, no, they're not calling, they're, he's not calling them illegal immigrants out of this country. They are uninvited guests should be treated the same as the people of your nation. This is the way it works. It doesn't even work in this country. Actually, they get privileges that people here don't get. Yeah, we basically... We've seen it. We've seen it. We've seen it in a grocery store 
where a woman basically did not pay for, I mean, not a grocery store, but a clothes store. She did not pay for two, two full shopping carts of clothes. I would have loved to have and two. And when they, um, when they. I would they, have loved to have two full shopping carts of clothes. And, for I'm, free. But I'm listening in the conversation, and if people are telling the security people, they can't, you can't arrest them. You know, we cannot charge them because the president will not, uh, the president and the state of California will not allow them to be charged. Mm -hmm. So just get, just shove them, take them out and tell them goodbye and don't come back. Mm -hmm. But that's how it is. Um, you do not have, um, um, That's why they loaded up two carts because they figured they wouldn't be welcome They back. wouldn't be allowed in again because they could stop them at the door the next time. Once they got the stuff in at the counter, you can't stop them. But you can prevent them from coming in. That's what the, they do. They can stop anybody from coming in, mm -hmm. but you can't stop them from getting merchandise and leaving with it. But this is the way it works. They're trying to push this on everybody in the world, and it's not working. They said that never in the history of our nation have we been so disliked by the world as we are under this president and his party. And and, and you want to know the bad part about it? We told people when they elected him to office that what was going to happen was he was going, because he had a history of being very left, no matter the press basically didn't make any ignored. difference because you, look, you looked at the history. I actually read on him, gentlemen, that I, I, here's the thing is, as I understand, if you want to have a neighbor, you want Barack Obama as your neighbor. Mm -hmm. He is, he is the, great neighbor. he's a great neighbor, great family man. He is the person, I mean, this guy, you know, it doesn't make any difference what color it. They said that he is, the perfect neighbor to have because he's always there, which you don't get in a lot of people anymore. That's where, that's where his mommy was really good bringing him up, or his grandmother was brought him up. They taught him, you know, that to respect the neighbors and stuff, and he does. But as a person, he is a left-wing zealot. It's like your beliefs should stay with you. Yeah. We don't have. Don't exercise your beliefs on us. But he's That's trying. My, it's always been my belief. Here it is. Let the, me be. The Democrats on gay rights have lost 39 consecutive elections. 39, and they're now doing it by judicial rulings. And uh, and the people on the people, the majority of the people, don't like you. Know, like they're forcing uh, marijuana on people now with no means of controlling it. They said, well. If you heard, I mean, I was listening the other night on Fox News where they, where they got a lot of young supporters of smoking. Well, it's no big deal. And then one of the older guys is on. He said, yeah, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. He said, you ever seen what happens when you use marijuana and drive? He said, you're giving people the right to go use marijuana and fly, fly airplanes with people on them, mm -hmm. to drive trucks, to drive this, to do that, because there is no real laws to prevent it. The same laws that says you can't smoke in a room do not prevent, provide the marijuana. So um, it's, it's a dangerous, they said it's an introduct, introductory drug, higher drugs. And everybody that uses marijuana consistently has to move higher because eventually the oh, really? system, if the system stays damaged, you can't get it out of your system. There's no such thing as detoxing from you marijuana. You know, here's, here's the funny part is there are people that I know of that smoke marijuana. Yeah. And with the legalization of marijuana, and I don't know if they smoked more because it was legal, but I've heard them now tell me that um, they don't want to do marijuana anymore because they felt like it had adversely affected their life. Yeah. And these are people that previously told me, what's the harm in marijuana? Yeah. Um, I, I, I come from the world of cowboy movies and stuff. My mm -hmm. father, okay, here's a good deal. My, okay, here's what you do if you work in westerns and you use your own equipment. My father would use ropes. My father would simply go get great hemp ropes, which is the best rope in the world. And you, in order to make the rope good, you set, you know, the, the, you cut it. You want to seal it, so you sit there and go light the end of it. Or think they're made, from, you know, hemp, folks. It's, mar it's really hemp good is quality marijuana. And you're sitting there seeing a room full, and my father go like this, and guys, oh God, you know, <laughs> you know that's. And I, I, I'm also, in, I was a musician, and basically the stuff, you could walk on the, the clouds in those rooms. Mm -hmm. You know what, there's not a single person that I knew as a musician that isn't brain damaged. Not a single oh, really? one of them. And they, um, Oh, I think just, it's rock and roll and drugs? Rock and roll, <laughs> because what happened was, they went from marijuana to harder drugs because the marijuana wasn't giving them, you, you build a tolerance up to it. 
So you actually... You do that with medication, too. That's right. And you have to have something more to get your buzz. I mean, I knew guys, most of the drummers that I ever knew used marijuana and harder drugs because it, um, here it is, it's, uh, playing drums is the worst possible thing you can do for your, your fingers, your wrists, your elbows, I mean, mm -hmm. the whole body just gets shook up by playing right, drums. Right, because you're hitting things with You're your hitting things all the time. But um, actually it coincides with the fact the last time we went, we were allowed to go to NAMM, the guy said, you know, he said, don't you want to play our, our, you know, our electronic thing and you put your earphones on? I said, no, the only reason you play drums is because you want people, you want to irritate people. You know, oh, you actually do play the drums, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but um, they we're having, what's going to happen is, they said the Republicans are going to take control of the Senate, and they may take a veto-proof control in the House and Senate as a result of what the Democrats have done, and all hell is going to break out. Mm -hmm. they, are going to, they are going to change everything this President and the Democratic Party has done. The Democrats control the lower court system. The Democrats are going to toss it all out. Republicans are going to repass. You think that we've had a disaster the last five years of his presidency? Wait till the next two years of the presidency, and you're going to see all hell broke out. And it, it will be, I said when the Democrats took control, that it would be two elections, two presidential elections before things would change. Mm -hmm. No, because the Democrats are running people even more extremes than the left. And, with, and the Republicans are probably, right now, they're the shake out Republican Party. The Republicans are trying to throw the people out that are currently in office uh -huh. that basically have helped cause. They gave you John McCain and Mitt Romney knowing well, the, they, they so dislike this president, they will vote for him. No. It has, it has nothing. Those people on the right aren't racist. Mm -hmm. if, they, if they'd have disliked him because he was a black man, he'd have never got elected to begin with. Uh -huh. Because what happens is you put you nominate somebody that they know, like Chris Christie, they got rid of. I'm assuming it was a Republican right that got rid of Christie. But they're getting rid of John Boehner at the moment. They're getting rid of McConnell. They're getting rid of McCain. All of these people that are liberal Republicans, they are getting rid of and putting them in with people that are fiscal responsible. But the problem that are fiscal responsible <coughs> also owe their allegiance, will owe their allegiance to the people that want to undo all the social nonsense the president has done. Mm -hmm. And hell is going to break out. We're looking at at least two more presidential cycles before we have a president that anybody is going to like. I know. That seems like a long way away. And so until next time, this is OCAM. And this is not a spring tip. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. For more information, you can go to www.mbnnewsvideoweb.com on the net or www.mondaybubbles.net. And wherever you are on social media, of course, um, oh, actually, subscribe to us here where you are. But follow us all over social media at Monty Ball. <laughs>